I'm getting kind of corny with you today because we're going to talk about corn and how it gets pollinated. I got a ton of sweet corn behind me back there and the bees have been coming in getting the pollen off of it and all that stuff and they say you want to plant your corn in big blocks, four or five rows at least. What about the folks that maybe only have room for two or three rows? You still need to pollinate that. I might have an idea. Oh yeah, let's pollinate some corn. <laughs> Corn is pollinated by the wind, and so if you don't got no wind, why not just make your own? There is another way to do this if you don't have a drone, and I'm going to show you that right now. and it involves something most people can get a hold of, and that's a newspaper. Here's how you do it. So when corn is pollinating, what you're wanting to do is these silks that form, obviously they need to get pollinated, and that happens from the tassels up high. These tassels produce little bitty uh, flecks that have pollen all over them, and you'll notice that it gets all over your leaves and whatnot, but what you really need is you need all of that pollen getting to the silks. Every single silk that you see on an ear of corn leads back to one specific kernel on the cob. And so, once again, pollination is very important. And what we're looking for when we know we've got good pollination is we're going to have brown to black kind of crusty looking silks, which indicate that she's getting pollinated. You can see this one's already starting to get some there. I'm going to use this guy that took a left turn at Albuquerque here. Get your newspaper out. You're just gonna you're gonna get some of this pollen on the newspaper. Lots of pollen there. And try not to let it blow off of the paper. Let's do that again. Now all we have to do is open this up and blow. Now if you plant in a big enough block, the wind is probably gonna take care of it. You're gonna have very few pollination issues because it's wind pollinated and you've got plenty of, uh, plenty of that stuff flying around so everything's gonna get taken care of. But if you've got a small garden and you're trying to grow some corn and you're not having success getting your silks uh, to turn and, and in, in turn get the uh, nice ears of corn, this may help you. One of the things that's helping me is about a half acre away over there I've got a beekeeper with tons of bees and they like to come over here and here lately all they've wanted to do is uh, play around in the corn in the evenings and in the mornings and so they've been getting on that getting on the silks and that really helps I like that well before we go I thought I'd let you take a gander at how the field corn is doing as well this is going to grind up great for corn meal corn flour grits and then uh, chicken feed also about a thousand plants happening right there and it was very easy using that uh, wheel hoe from Haas uh, to make furrows, put the drip tape down in there, and then cover it up and then seed on top of it. So those root zones are right there where the water is. And we haven't had rain uh, for over a month now. We, we had 12 inches and then the faucet shut off. Because it's buried, it goes right to the root zones, it saves on water, and it's very efficient. And right now I'm actually feeding this with a 20-20-20 water-soluble fertilizer and some micro boost. I'll put a link down uh, below for that. If you are interested in feeding your corn with drip, it's a great way to do it. And the cool thing about the drip irrigation tubing is I actually ran a T, uh, I spliced in, ran a T, and I've actually got my drip tubing running out, and then I put it up along the, uh, our pool house here, ran it down, and then sent it straight out to the field corn. Extremely efficient, I've got the ball valves where I can turn it off and on. Really, really nice uh, to pick which corn field I want to send the water to. I guess you'd call this b-roll <laughs> get it <laughs> B. Huh? Oh. <laughs> just pollinating off of my arm here <laughs> i guess i'm gonna get corny now <laughs> i'm convinced that's not true though 
completely. Well, give this a try and you'll probably be amazed. <laughs> we are going to have to do a whole lot of harvesting on this stuff. I'm going to show you how we process it, uh, get it off, shuck it, clean the silks off. The best way to do it is to freeze it and I'm going to show you how to do that and keep it fresh to where it tastes good. But uh, we will do that in a future video coming up and it won't be long. <laughs> at the rate everything's going here. But guys, I do want to thank you so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. If you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, we are really closing in on 50,000 subscribers. And that is just absolutely awesome. We appreciate you. And thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and share the video if you found it helpful. I am super glad of that. And let me know down in the comment section below what you're growing right now. I'm gonna go get a cold iced tea, I think, and cool off. It's only like 115 degrees right now. Whew. It's warm. Very warm. <laughs>